This time on 47 Motorsports, we'll take a look at the Saab 900 and find out from my friend Joe just what made him take the leap of faith that was adopting it as his daily driver. Here we are now, all the lads. Yeah boy. Oh my arse. <laughs> we have picked a rather, um, it's a tranquil spot isn't it this? It's not too shabby really. It's alright, I've seen worse places. <laughs> seen, seen worse places indeed. So, I suppose, you're not, like you weren't really into cars were you growing up? No. You're not like a car person. It was never really a thing that I can considered I suppose. Hmm. Uh, it was just, they were modes of transport. My family, there wasn't a big car nut within it or anything like that. It's, yeah, uh, that's kind of like me actually. Just, just, as I say, mode of transport. Um, now my dad did have two souls. He had the 9.3 and the 9.5. He got the last, the uh, 9.5 being the last one, the Aero. Yeah, they were they were both brilliant cars actually, I think. So they're, they were your sort of childhood transport, right? Yeah, they were, they were. Yeah. It, all the way from, first car I can remember them having was the 9.3 and my dad only got rid of the 9.5 in the last 10 years, maybe? Yeah. So, no, they were, were they both estates? Uh, the 9.5 was the estate, 9.5 was the estate, but the uh, 9.3 was a saloon. It was a four door, actually. Um, nice. But yeah, silver and grey. Yeah. So and the 9.3 came directly after, or was, was the new, there was the new generation 900, right? Yeah, so that's the old generation, the original one, I suppose. That's the, the old yeah, shape. That's, that's the old shape. And then, so that's 94. In 94 was when they then brought in the new shape. Um, so I suppose that's one of the last of a dying breed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, a, they're an iconic car, really. You know, they used that shape all the way from the nine, what was it, the nine, oh, nine there was the nine nine, there was the yep. nine zero in yep. the 70s mm -hmm. or 80s. There's actually a Saab 80 as well, wasn't there? There was that shape. Yeah. So they, they just oh, got yeah. their mileage out of that, out of that shape. So that's why it's so... If it's not broke, don't fix. It's not broke. It, uh, don't try to fix it. Thank you, Will Smith. <laughs> it, uh, and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the new, the new shape that came after it. Oh, the I'll new generation. No, me neither. I'll rephrase that. I think that looks better than the than the new shape. I would agree. Yeah. I just, I like a boxy car. But it's it's not like just boxy for the shape of it. It's it's very very nicely styled. I think usable um, usable classic adventure wagon. Yeah, and the fact that it's a 900 SE as well. Goose. Goose. <laughs> yeah, because Goose actually didn't really, it didn't really mean anything, did it? It was just a drum level. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and you were originally, we went to look at a turbo originally. Yes. That was just before the pandemic, week before everything shut just down. Just before the pandemic. Oh, uh, what did we know? <laughs> two weeks, that's what we thought, two week holiday. <laughs> two week holiday. Let's go yeah. buy a Saab. Yeah, so you originally were going to buy a turbo and then this one came up. So the, the turbo we looked at wasn't the worst in the world, but it wasn't a great color. Yeah, it was a pretty. It was silver, it was just silver, it was just a bit dull. It didn't really, silver doesn't really suit them. I think old cars should be like bright, interesting colors. It's a color that makes you notice it and then you realize what it is. I yeah. suppose that's the thing I noticed with that one is mm. that you're driving down and you'll have noticed it on this trip as well. You're driving around and people look at it. Yeah, that head turning factor. A lot of people do like that in a, in a classic car. And what's quite nice is I'll be, I'll be driving along and then there'll be someone of a certain age and they'll notice it. I had one and, of then, those. and then they'll point <laughs> and they'll go, oh, look at it. And it just makes you feel good. Yeah, because you don't, you know, a few years ago they were everywhere, but now you. You really don't, don't see them really as much. You really don't see them. Yeah. Or bikes. You see lots of bikes. Plenty. Not that going that the, speed though. The most delicately driven like 50cc <laughs> bike I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why then. So do your dad always drove Sabs? Well, he had two. That's well, the thing. he had two Sabs. That says it all, doesn't it? If you only had two for the entire the entirety of your upbringing. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're that dependable. They're that reliable. You know. Exactly. And it does. It sticks with you what your parents drive. I think. I do too. I couldn't put a finger on why, yes, that, other than the fact that I just like them. Yeah. And I can't really describe why. It probably is the parent growing up factor, but realistically, yeah, I can't put my finger on it. No, that's fair. And why did you decide to buy a classic car, I guess? <laughs> 
<laughs> is that a bad influence or a good influence? I'm not quite sure. It's an influence. It's an influence. Um, <laughs> Connor, U L E Z. Connor, U L E Z. And then in the end, Connor won. I beat the U L E Z. He beat the U L E Z. <laughs> Only person ever to have done so. Yeah, so what, it was just me? Just, you thought I was having such a good time with mine? <laughs> well, I saw what happened with yours. Um, <laughs> that's a story for another video. Yeah. Um, um, I think, realistically, I'm, I was looking at it and I thought, which way is the car market going currently? Mm. Within the next 10, 15 years, it's probably going to be electric, hybrid, along those lines. Do I want to buy a new car now? True, that's very sensible. Actually. And then have to deal with all of that will come later. We've already seen the ULEZ growing. It's gonna, uh, we're only gonna get more things like that. Now let's take a look at Saab themselves. Saab started off as a Swedish aircraft manufacturer in the 1930s. Not that they'd ever let you forget it. Every piece of advertising they ever commissioned features fighter jets. In fact, Saab simply stands for Swedish aircraft, AB. AB being like the Swedish equivalent of limited for a company. After the Second World War, the company turned to cars and used all of its aircraft expertise in the process. There was a big focus on aerodynamics and from the late 1940s until the mid-1960s, the company essentially just made several versions of their 9.6 model, some with very cool V4 engines. In 1968, they released the 9.9, which heralded in another 30 years of using the same basic shape for all their cars. The 9.9, 90 and 900 were all roughly the same car. All came with inline fours, some with very cool turbos. In 1985, the company deviated from that 900 shape with the 9000, a more conventional looking saloon. Too late though, in 1989, Saab was bought out by General Motors and that was of course the beginning of the end. The company eventually went bankrupt in the 2000s. Okay, so should we have a little look at your um, car? Well, this thing. Oh, this old thing? This old thing? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Goose. <laughs> Loose goose. <laughs> About hoose. Goose is in remarkable condition for a 28 year old. It's older than I am. Vehicle, it's my age, 1994. <laughs> yeah, a lot of work was done. Let's, let's move this out of the way. A lot of work was done um, yeah, prior, so, to, prior to me. Like you, so tell me again, the previous owner, Previous owner was well, a Saab enthusiast. Saab enthusiast. Think, think Connor, but for Saabs rather than Mercedes. Oh yeah. And um, poor fella. Yeah, I know, right? Poor thing. He um, he had a project car, and now, was that? Did you see it? Was it another nine hundred? Oh, I didn't. He didn't actually say what it was. Bet it was a turbo. Ooh. It might have been a 99. No, it was, Ooh, was, it it was older? older than a 99. Ooh. It was one of the seventies. Uh, car from the seventies. Oh, I okay. seem to remember. Can I remember the exact one? No, I can't. Yeah. But um, so he got himself this to tie him over while uh, he was working on that one. Then March 2020 happened, lockdown happened, and he suddenly had lots of time on his hand to fix he his project himself. car. Yeah, he found himself able to. So he fixed his project car and then had no need for this. But while he needed this, he'd spent two grand. That's always it. nice, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if somebody had one of my cars that I had just been using as a stopgap, they would find it in worse condition than I find it. Yeah, it, it, he spent two grand, new brakes, he'd done the works. Yeah. A couple of new tires. Um, I can see. A, hot, a sugary drink is important on a hot, sunny day. Is it? No. You heard it here first. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the, um, the dashboard then. <clears throat> Laid out by fighter pilots, right? Spend no expense. Oh, I will stop with the Jurassic Park references now. It's easy when you when you build fighter planes to have people who fly fighter jets to tell you where to put stuff. Well, I suppose that's the idea is that they'd always put the things that you'd need and use the most Closest close at hand. It. Such as the radio. Radio. Which is true. I mean, that's what you fiddle with most, right? <laughs> Not anymore, <laughs> Boris. I promise. Um, <laughs> especially when driving. Uh, other th and it, such a thing such as the aircon, which I definitely very use important. all the time and definitely works. It definitely, definitely works. It does not. Very, um, very old car spec. Yeah, with that good old-fashioned illegal now uh, aircon. CFCs in the aircon CFCs, gas. Yeah, all my homies hate the ozone layer. 
Um, hazards. <laughs> Usual hazards. The Dukes of Hazards. <laughs> uh, heater controls. Heater, heater control, yeah. Fog light. The headlights you can do from here. Yeah. Which I, I love. Uh, I, yeah, Mercedes style. I, I love switch. I could have a good click. Um, obviously. Saab Scania. The key, as you may or may oh, not notice. Oh yeah, there's some sad trivia for our viewers. Down in the middle, that, that hopefully you're getting the key and not something else. Um, so key down here. Don't, uh, don't smash your knee into it in a crash. Which is... Kind of sensible, kind of strange. Kind of sensible, and it's kind of fun. Whenever... Um, it's a novelty, isn't it? If anybody else is ever driving it for the first time, it's Where's always a bit like... Where, 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 where? It's always like, oh, down, no, down it's, here. It's um, there. That's where also the controls are for the sunroof. Sunroof and windows, right in the middle. Windows. Is, it's the old car style as well. I don't know if there was a point where they decided they could just put them in the doors mm. and do all that wiring, but... It was the point where they decided they could trust the passengers to control their own windows. Yeah, true. I'm not sure I always do. <laughs> God. True, true, I do true. tend to trust my passengers. Let's not make me sound like a complete grumpy son. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so two door, uh, three door rather, there, is a, a there door. is a boot. There is a boot. <laughs> We've um, got that classic Saab curved windscreen going on. Yes, crack included. Um, yeah, that's all right. Seats, cloth, I think leather was available. Le leather was available, but whoever bought this one uh, decided against it. It's Fair nice. Enough. I actually, I do quite like leather. I like but leather. But I also quite like cloth, you know, so. They're very comfortable. It's a, comfy, um, it's a comfy old bus, this, yeah. It does, however, mean that when it gets warm, your back gets very warm. But True, but leather, leather will do that even worse. The same. That's just a seat for you. Worse. Um, now, there is actually, because I've spent about a week in here, in the back, there is actually enough room in the back to sit comfortably as a six-foot-tall adult, which is pretty pretty good going for a three-door car. Pretty good going for a... For not a very large car. No, they're I mean, not. It's, it's long. They're not huge. But it's not enormous. It's not like these god awful SUVs. Um, yeah. If you've got an SUV in the audience and they're not god awful, apart from the ones that are, what should we see? What do you want to look at next? Do you want to pop the hood and we'll have a look in the under the bonnet? Pop the hood. <laughs> oh. No, these these are in the the exclusive little club. For uh, clamshell bonnets. Really is a clean engine bay. Yeah. Now, if you had a turbo, it would be. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> no, it's interesting. Obviously, this is not a turbo. No, it's the, is, it's uh, naturally aspirated. Yeah, it's a so it's a 900 SE. Just if anybody asks you, just tell them you don't like turbo lag. <sighs> well, that, that that is true. I don't want yeah. it. Nobody wants turbo. Nobody wants that. <laughs> That's what non-turbo guys say when they, <laughs> when they got nothing else to argue back about. <laughs> Um, it's interesting that it's got a clamshell bonnet, which is really lovely, because I'm pretty sure the Triumph that this engine originally came from. Yep. Because of course the B202 or whatever it is, Saab engine, was, mm -hmm. was the Triumph mm -hmm. four-cylinder, and I think the dual Triumphs had uh, clamshell bonnets on them as well. Yeah. So there's an interesting bit of trivia. Just Second... Like, <laughs> were you about to say about it being the wrong way around? Yeah. Engine is backwards, so all your all your belts are down here. Uh, your gearbox is down here, making it significantly easier to fix a gearbox than. Uh, yeah, it might, you could work on being in a different. You could do a clutch easier than you can change the belt, which it's it's kind of cool. But also, you change the belts more often than you change the clutch. Yahoo, yeehaw, <laughs> yeehaw. But yeah, so you can see so some clean. of the work that he'd done on the engine bay generally. It, the Oh, it's beautiful. It's, I mean, you've had this car two I've had years. It 18, uh, it was June, what, what is, so it's now April 22. I got this in June 20. So almost two yeah, years now. Two years, coming up on two years. Yeah. Still so clean in here. I remember when you first got this, this was immaculate. It's just a bit dusty now. Yeah. 
Yeah, which I suppose shows it's been used. Has been used. Uh, oh, and all that Saharan sand that you can probably see. So it's in that's there. a that's a new addition. <laughs> it's in there. Now this is a two liter, two liter engine, and these use the same Bosch fuel injection system here. Yep. That my Mercedes all use. Kindred Nothing spirits. but the best. Nothing but the best. <laughs> <laughs> it is when it's a good, it's good. It's a good system. It works well. Nice fuses. clear fuse box, that's very BMW style. Yeah, there's, I mean, pretty there are cool fuses though. out the back, through, underneath the back seat, rear seats as well, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty normal. They're a bit more of a hassle to get to. <laughs> they're the ones you don't need as much. Yeah, there's also the only fuse that went. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> oh no, it didn't go. That's a, that's a, that's a horrible, horrible lie. It didn't lying go, to we me. thought it had. <laughs> and uh, no, it was the motor of the, um, oh, the very, sunroof. very common, Sunroof relatively motor. common Saab issue is the electric, uh, the motors for the electric windows went on uh, this side. Oh, sad. But uh, we sorted that. Is that, that's your air intake there? That's interesting. It's right next to the oil, which is really stupid. That's weird. I think. Yeah, well. <laughs> You'd be very as careful. Long as as long as you knew not to just dump oil into the air intake. <laughs> right next to the uh, oil and the coolant. And did you say your headlight wipers are just unplugged because they're just... Yeah, so they're just unplugged because there's a, an electrical problem with them whereby when they're turned on, the washer fluid is constantly turned on and we just haven't got oh, yeah, to deal with that that's yet. That's not good. You'd run out of washer fluid really, really quick. Yeah, we'd wash all of the bird crap off, but... Um, would. Only for a limited time only. One night only. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's on the to-do list, but... Um, yeah, because it is a very cool feature. It's a very cool feature that I would like to get sorted. Yeah. Um, but it's not... It's not imperative, really. It's not car braking. I think that was law in Sweden. That you had to have headlight was washers. Really? But not technically necessary. Because, I mean, how often do your lights actually get dirty, dirty? Never. That's how often. Never, never. There's, no, there's not enough Saharan sand to cause that. No. Ah, I'll close it. it yeah, close, close that up. That'd be cool. Yeah. Fly. Nice. Goose. It really does look like it spells goose. It does. It's kind of cool, really. Yeah, it's a nice little, nice little feature. Sixteen valves. Midnight blue, is it midnight blue? Is I it midnight blue? I was actually going to ask you the colour code. I think code. it's midnight blue. That's quite a beardy question, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very rare colour, actually. They, did, they only did it? it. They only did it. Oh, I just flicked wood on them. Um, they only did it for a year. Oh. So this is obviously 94, which is the last year that they did this shape. Yeah. Uh, they changed in 94. That's they right, changed it's a changeover, to the changeover new, model year. To the, yeah, the, the, the new shape, which was just not as nice. Yeah. Um, so you could say last hurrah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's got a, little, a few little bits that need sorting. Oh, there's a spider on there, hello. I know, they are an iconic design. Um, there's a few little bits, little bits of rust, which, yeah, prob that's which need dealing with before they become an issue. To be expected, really. It is older than I am. It's my age. <laughs> I don't look as good as this car does, to be honest. <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Show me that boot space. I mean, for what is a hatchback, it's got quite a lot of uh, boot space Ow. there. We were able to store three people's uh, stuff quite easily for for a week. Yeah, we did. Um... Whiskey. <laughs> Other whiskies are available. Uh, non blue Pepsis are also available. Nice. Um, I wouldn't drink that if I were you. It's, the, it, it's a very large boot. Yeah, it is a good, good chunk I mean, of space, you know. I... <laughs> it's a very large boot. It is. I can, there's, there's so much room for activities. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. You'll notice there's no no rear there, wiper, no wing. 
Did they come with wipers? Some of them did. Because saloons some generally didn't. don't have a rear wiper, but this is not really a saloon. It's you've got the, uh, I mean, you've got the hole in the window for it. <laughs> yeah, it's blanked off. That's interesting. Um, which I assume is just in relation to the fact that you probably use the window for multiple models. Yeah. Um, there was a five door. I'm pretty sure there was a five door. Um, I feel like there was a five door. There, there, was, there was a five door, but I don't understand why they wouldn't just put the wiper on all of them if we're going to. No, me neither, but I mean, some the Swedes are just built different, you know? I guess they kind of are. And they built a lovely little thing. They did. So that was a quick look at Joe's Saab 900 SE, AKA Goose. AKA Goose. And yeah, is this a bit where I say good luck? This is the bit where you say good luck. Good luck? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>